Praise be to Christ Jesus. How are you all? Are you all fine at home? We have had almost six classes happening virtually right now. Do you all read through the lessons regularly? And do you do the activities that I give you each week? Well, I should probably ask your catechism teachers if you're doing it regularly. If you see, in the last class, we learned about Jesus who came to proclaim the kingdom of God. And there, we learnt about the five aspects in this mission of Jesus. We have three more aspects to discuss in today's class. So shall we get ready for that? Now join your hands, close your eyes and recite the prayer along with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, help us to remember today's lessons properly and be with you and know you more through today's class. Amen. All right. The first two aspects which we saw in the previous class was freedom for the oppressed and also liberation from bondage. But today what we are going to see is the third aspect and that is sight for the blind. When I say you sight for the blind, you will remember many miracles which Jesus performed and gave sight to blind people. One of those instances can be seen in the Gospel according to St. John chapter 9 verse 1 to 8 onwards. Here there was a man who was begging and blind from birth. The disciples asked Jesus, Lord, why do you think this man is blind? Is it because of his sin or his parents' sin? Jesus corrected his apostles by saying, it is not because of sin of him or his parents that he is blind, but because the glory of God has to be revealed in him. After Jesus healed this man, by making a mix out of mud and his saliva, he asked the man to go and wash himself in the Siloa pond. This blind man received sight and went to tell all the people like the Pharisees, scribes and others who had seen him begging before that he has become a person who has been healed by Christ. But the Pharisees and scribes were not ready to believe this and accept that Jesus healed this man. At this point, you see that Jesus comes back and calls the Pharisees and scribes as blind men. Though you have eyes, you don't see. Now you can see that Jesus is confusing us. He told the blind man that I can heal you and healed him, gave him sight. Whereas he calls the Pharisees and scribes who are having perfect sight and eyes as blind men. Why is this? We should understand that Jesus is meaning that their eyes, that is, their inner eyes, the eyes of their souls, are covered and shunned by the darkness and evil thoughts in them. And this is the very keen point that Jesus wants us as his children to remember. We as his children are called to stand against such dark practices and thoughts in our society. Accept people as they are. Love people for what they are. That is what we as children can do. Have you ever avoided talking to any of your friends just because they are dark in color or do not study enough like you or do not talk enough like you? Then we are also becoming people who are blind towards the people around us. And that is what Christ is trying to teach us to avoid in our life. The fourth aspect of Jesus' mission is freedom for the oppressed. Here we will be seeing three categories of freedom. Firstly, freedom from sin. We see that each of us human beings even today, after Christ established us freedom from sin through his sacrifice on Calvary, are under the bondages of sin. Jesus, through his mission of proclamation of the kingdom of God, is trying to bring us to the note that he had come into this world to free us from sin. How do we see that? 
in the examples of the miracles he performs where he heals and forgives the sins of various people like the paralytic man, the leper, the woman who had hemorrhage and many other examples, we see that Jesus is forgiving their sins, thus giving them freedom from sin and also healing their sickness, thus offering them freedom from sickness. Now coming to the third part of this, freedom from law. Law is something which has been brought in to protect us as human beings. But why would we need freedom from law itself? For this, you should take a look into the olden times, that is, the times when the Jewish culture practiced law very strictly in its literal sense. For example, in the Jewish culture, on the Sabbath day, they were not allowed to work or do any deeds other than prayer and offering themselves to God. But we see that Jesus and his disciples visited the fields and when the disciples took a few grains from the fields, the Pharisees and scribes accused them of doing sin on Sabbath. This is such a crude law which they had to follow. Such instances and judgments brought in in the name of law and severe strictness in the Jewish culture was abolished and set forth by Jesus as not necessary things. This is where he also proved that the Son of God is the Lord of the Sabbath. We saw an example of Jesus healing the paralytic man in the last class which also adds to this point. Now, when Jesus came into this world to proclaim the kingdom of God, he wanted to make sure that the law gives equal space for the rich, the poor, the one who has power, the one who has no power, the one who has strength and the one who is weak. And that is why he means here freedom for the oppressed by saying that people who are oppressed by the law will be given freedom by his proclamation of the kingdom of God. Fifth aspect in the mission of Jesus is the year of the Lord. The year of the Lord is a practice that you see in the olden times, that is the Old Testament, where the hundredth year in the liturgical calendar is considered as the century year or the year of the Lord, the year which is offered and acceptable to the Lord. In this year, the specific practices which were seen in the Jewish culture are that the debts of people were written off, slaves were freed, and justice was offered to all people in the society. This is the same practice that Jesus wants to bring through his mission. We had learned in the previous classes that the central value of the kingdom of God in itself is love complete and unfathomable love. This love of God is what Christ wants us to share through our practicing of the kingdom of God in today's world as well. Treating the people around you liberally and being honest with everyone around you. Treating everyone equally. That is how Christ wants us to practice this year acceptable to the Lord even in today's world. From all these aspects of the mission of Christ, we have understood that one main thing that Christ followed was to announce the kingdom of God and proclaim it to everyone around him at any instance possible. We see that Christ does this through various miracles, the parables he mentioned and the various healing ministries that he offered to the people in his times. This is the same practice that we, the children of the church, have to follow because the mission of Christ is the mission that the church has entrusted to us. We are all called to act as the yeasts which will proclaim the kingdom of God to the people in their world and around them. How can we all as young children and youngsters do this? It is very simple. We step down into the world around us to our friends, family and every people we know. Tell them little things about what Christ has done for you in your life. Not just what Christ has done in the Holy Gospel. Every little thing that Christ has done for you, 
you teach that to people and by doing that you become the yeast that is sowing the seeds of the kingdom of God in the people around you and for this the central thing which helps you is the Gospels all the four Gospels written by the Gospelists Saint Matthew Saint Mark Saint Luke and Saint John are the sole evidence for us to understand and know about the life and teachings of Christ which we can take forward to people. With that we will remember that we are the yeasts who are called to sow the seeds of the kingdom of God in the people around us. Moving forward let's take a look at the book back exercises in this text. Please, please turn to page number 33 and 34 in your textbook. The word of God for guidance in this lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but only the ones who does the will of my Father in heaven. This is simply the entire line of what the lesson is trying to tell us. We, by living according to the will of our heavenly Father, will become those who can enter into the kingdom of God and be called God's children. Let us practice this word of God in our life and also learn it so that we can live according to it. Let's move to the question answers which is given in page 34. Which was the book given to Jesus for reading as he entered the synagogue? Simple, the book of prophet Isaiah was given to Jesus for reading. What was the mission entrusted to Jesus according to the word of God read in the synagogue? We saw that clearly in the five important aspects of Jesus' mission. Firstly, proclaiming good news to the poor. Secondly, giving freedom for the oppressed. Liberation of those who were bonded under slavery and sin. And then giving sight to the blind. And finally, the year acceptable to the Lord. How did Jesus remove blindness from the different dimensions of human life? We see this during the instance when Jesus heals the blind man. He is able to relieve him of the physical blindness and through his wise words to the Pharisees and scribes, he teaches us about the blindness that entitles our souls and how to break free from it too. What does the year of the Lord mean? The year of the Lord means the year acceptable to the Lord where every people in the world live under the feelings of brotherhood, fraternity, equality and love. How was the kingdom of God revealed in the words, deeds and presence of Jesus? We see through the several miracles performed by Jesus and the parables that he told to us and the various healing ministries he performed in his life that Jesus was proclaiming the word of God and the kingdom of God to each one of us. What is the kingdom of God? Saint Paul teaches us that the kingdom of God is not mere food or drink but justice and love being shared and provided to all men. With reference to this we do see the question and answers discussed in this lesson. With that let us remember what we learnt in today's lessons and try to imply that in our lives and live according to the will of God. Kindly join your hands and close your eyes for the concluding prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you for helping us to know more about the kingdom of God and also letting us learn and try to practice this in our lives. Lord, make us instruments of your kingdom of God so that we can proclaim it to other people in our life as well. Amen.